guys, what's up? Welcome to Show It Better and today we are going to learn how to do an architectural maquette or 3D model, whatever you want to call it, using SketchUp and Enscape 3D. So these are more or less the examples we want to follow and what you want to do with your 3D model is three things, okay? So first, you want to have low poly trees. When you have low poly trees, or you want to have the trees that you would use yourself in an architectural maquette. Also, I have a square base, a thick square base that, you know, represents, the, I don't know, like the model that you would do in real life. And just ask yourself, how would you do the model, you know? Don't, don't add, add any complexities to where there aren't any, you know? Like, if how would you do the model and do the same thing with your own 3D model, right? So here I open Enscape and, well, as you guys can see, I have the base and I have low poly trees and I have my house, right? Now what I need to do is uh, make it look like a, like a maquette. So I activate white mode. You guys can see each step of the way in my other screen, activate white mode. And there you can see like, hey, you know, it looks good. It looks like all white. So how would I would do it in a conceptual maquette kind of, but it's not really convincing yet. So I'm just gonna get a little bit closer to the camera. Remember, we always want points of view from the top because we're all, we're always watching, you know, as humans, since we're so big, we're, all, we're always watching this from the top. We wanna get a real depth of field, you know? So, cause, cause in, since, we, we have to pretend this is really a really small object and if a camera saw it or if we, if we saw it then you know we would see some something blurry like the, the trees in the first plane blurry then the house in, in real good and then the back blurry we're going to disactivate autofocus move the focal focal point until it focuses in the house and the amount of depth of field is going to be at our maximum okay so after we do this we're going to go to the tab with the atmosphere tab and we are just going to lower the brightness of the sun that is one option so we, we can't see the shadows which is you know one option of taking photographies of the of, of this is not so much harsh shadows or you can increase the density of the clouds without lowering the brightness of the sun which is what i prefer right so increase the sun but increase the density of the clouds so the, so, so the shadows won't be as harsh and as defined as they were without clouds another thing we can do is change the temperature so we remove a little bit of bloom uh, the color temperature we lower it down and we increase the saturation just a bit right so this this will make it look like more of a not so much of a, of a render with, with those blue shadows but it'll just make it look a little bit better now the important thing is to adjust our view to a view that a view that you would normally get if you're watching maquette right which would be an aerial view like let's say this is laying on a table somewhere with, with a black background and you and you guys can see hmm, it's, it's starting to look kind of cool you know hey it, yeah it does look like maquette so yeah so this could be one option okay so you guys can can do this for one option like i like the colors so if you guys want to preserve this you can uh, save this setting and say like i for example select the the setting to be white mode one for maquette something like that right and you guys want to also save the point of view so this is very very important you may want to look at pictures of maquettes and have this as a reference because if you have like i don't know like a human point of view it won't it will it'll look like you know a place that is snowing or somewhere but if you show the base the square base if you show the thickness then it's going to be like hey you know maybe it's a maquette okay so i have some settings saved of what i did with the white mode and here you guys can see more or less an example of it and you guys can pause in each tab to see what were the exact settings but i think it was a really really good look because it, it doesn't really have a harsh sun a harsh shadows but it's really really bright so remember you have you have to have brightness in it you have to have like a more or less cold temperature with a 110 percent of saturation and so there's going to be no clouds no density no atmosphere no nothing and the sun is going to be at zero as well so that's what it's what's going to give it you know like it like if it's if it was made out of chocolate or something it, it really looks I think it really looks really cool it could be a little bit warmer as well but I think it looks really cool then um, remember you guys have what you guys have to do to export these images is uh, select a good resolution you can export in 4k and just click export so here i'm just going to export one of these images and click in the screenshot to file option when i open it it's going to give me the option of where i want to save it right and remember you guys want to do this in very high quality so you can get so much different looks once you start tweaking everything you know it's very important when you tweak the temperature 
the sun, the density of the clouds, it just changes the image completely and it gives it another way of understanding it. It is very, very awesome. Here you guys can see various examples of what um, the white mode alone can do, you know? So that's very, very cool. Now let's go to polyester mode because that mode, you know, represents a specific material. So there we can decide how much light can go in through this material, through, through the materials or our objects or how much light can go. So you have a percentage of transmission that you can, that you can adjust. And you guys can see here as I adjust it, how the sun, you know, adjusts to the trees and you guys can see the difference of the shadows. So when I have low transmission, shadows are a bit harder. And when I have high transmission, the shadows are, the shadows are so much softer and it looks so, it looks completely different. So another, what you can do here, the, the look I liked is um, increase the saturation a bit. 91% is okay. Um, lower the temperature we want to have. We want to have like that wood model look, that maquette of the wood. Then the sun is going to be, you know, a kind of intense. And the hour is also so, so important. So we're going to have an hour where we don't have sun. Like for example, five o'clock where the sun is not direct. It's already kind of setting. So it doesn't, it doesn't uh, produce any hard shadows, but there is still light. This is the look we can get if we do that, okay? So what we need to do is set your time in the Enscape option to around four o'clock, okay? So when you, when you set it to four o'clock, uh, around 420, okay? Exactly 420. It can, you can see, you know, you won't have direct sunlight, but you will still have light. Then you will, you will want your exposure brightness more or less to 37%. Your color temperature, a warm color temperature, but not so saturated, but saturated like, you know, how the wood would be, not without too much bloom. And, and you guys can see here, it's starting to look like, like, like a wood model, you know, like without the texture, but it's starting to look like really, really interesting. And what, and what helps a lot as well is the black background, you know, to, like if we had like a whole photo session with this model so it looks really really cool so another thing you guys can do is uh, lower the the fog i think the fog is too too intense so lower the fog a little bit and you guys can see well it's so much better it really look, i think i mean i don't know but i i i think it looks like a model you want to have a little bit of fog so it can cover like the back trees a little bit you know so there can, can be a little bit of, of of texture to the background but you guys can see how important the density of the clouds is so since I have a lot of clouds, like there is, uh, there is a lot of light bouncing to the model, but it's not direct light. When I lower the density of the clouds, then I have direct light, which is what I want to avoid because I don't, I don't want really, really, really hard shadows. So this is a really, really cool look if you're looking for that maquette, like that wood maquette look. Yeah, you guys can see the difference. One, one option can change the complete look of everything. That, that's what's cool about Enscape, in my opinion. Yeah, so finally, you guys remember that you guys can save these settings and for whatever project you have, like Enscape saves these settings and you can just load them up and that will be all right, you know? If you don't want the, the wood to look as, you know, wood-like, you can, you know, increase the brightness so it doesn't look that dark. And remember to have a point of view that you, you would take a picture of a 3D model. You know, you guys can search for pictures in Pinterest and Google. So we, we're just going to start saving the images, right? So you see that when we start saving the images, a little bit gets cropped because the, the, the ratio that I have selected is more of a 16 to 9 ratio. That means like it's going to be more of a landscape-ish ratio. So that's okay. You guys can just... Um, you know, adjust your size to whatever you guys want. And you see, I, I, you see here, I'm exporting things with different, different looks, different feels. So when you, when you have the brightness up and the sun a little bit more intense without that much clouds, like the density a little bit lower, you guys can see that it's more of a sunset feeling, but it still looks like a, you know, like a handmade model. <clears throat> so this was another look I really, really liked because it looked really, really cool. And when you get very close to the model, if you have, um, if you have very, a very detailed model and that has glass and everything, it just, oof, it just looks so, so awesome. It looks like if you, if you, if you, if you put your 3D model, you know, outside and that's what it looks like, I, I'm, I'm serious. Obviously you can enhance these details, but I think that looks very, very cool. And we're going to, put them very quick in Photoshop to see 
how we can enhance them a little bit. I'm gonna show you guys the final results very fast, okay? Okay, so now we can see that we imported these images to Photoshop and we can see like the variety of feelings that we get. I mean, it's so, so crazy. So what we can do to enhance one of these images is first, uh, like increase maybe in some of these the blurriness in the background so we can just make it a little bit more blurry so with the blur tool we can just blur the foreground and the background a little bit so that will help a lot also when you're taking photos of these maquettes um, sometimes you have a spotlight not a, not a, not like a, a very diffuse light so the dark the, the back is going to be a little bit darker so you guys want to do this with a soft 10% black brush. You want to make it a little bit darker in the background. So it looks like, you know, if you if it, if it was like, you know, really university-ish type of photo session. You guys, you know what I mean? And you can increase the contrast a little bit and make the, the maquette, you know, the house a little bit more important. So that's, you know, that's something we can do. And obviously you can add text to it, you know, because these type of images, are very good to understand scale. So this is very different from a render. So, so when, when you have an image in your presentation of an architecture maquette, it just gives it a lot sense of scale to the project. It's really, really cool. So here I'm just adding text to it and you know, you can, you can make it its own diagram. Remember that you can also add lines to it. So that's just quite interesting. Also, if you don't want that wall wood look, like that warm wood look, you can also get that white cold look that you sometimes get with 3D models that are just with all white material and it's just a very cold feeling. So you guys can also, for, for the blurring option, you can go to the tilt shift option and select which parts you want to have blurry or not. And also, as, as, I, as I told you guys, just decrease the brightness from the edges or with a 10% opacity brush, make a, a kind of vignette. And with a photo filter, just make it a little bit colder. It will really give it that white model touch. It's, I think it's really, really interesting. So you guys can see here, I'm just adding this, sh adding shadows and 10% opacity brushes to the edges. And it, and it looks like a, like a 3D model. And in some other, you guys can see, I did some very interesting things. You, you, you guys can see, for example, in this one, I added hands to it. So it would look like, you know, like someone is really, you know, hey, pointing, hey, what's this tree doing here? Or adjusting a tree. It really gives it that sense of scale. I mean, okay, obviously it looks fake at first, but once you adjust the hand and everything to it, it looks so awesome. So that was one look I really, really like. Final one is really, really cool because it has like that cold look. So I did again, you know, created a style of vignette style around the corners and added a filter, a coloring filter, which to be like a, a cooling filter. So it looked like it had a light from the top. And that was basically it, you know, just adjust the crop a little bit and increase the blurriness to the sides. So you remember, you, got, you have to have a model with that it will be kind of believable with that yeah i think it's it's a very cool look that you guys can get for your architectural presentations or your for your student presentations and it will give you give a really cool sense of scale so thank you guys for watching remember you guys can, you have to use and sketchup and enscape 3d um the new version of enscape is out so you guys so it's available for two, for sketchup 2016 and 2017 if you guys want it and yeah, I hope you guys really, really enjoyed this video. I did. And I'm just going to leave you with the images that I did it. Thank you guys very much. See you guys in the next video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video.